Welcome to Free Will Baptist Church. We are located on the beautiful tropical island of St. Croix in the United States Virgin Islands. We are very glad that you chose to join us. So please, do stay tuned as Free Will Baptist Church presents. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that brought my liberty I do not know just why he came to love me so he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my fall and saw my need how marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul he looked beyond he looked beyond Beyond my fault and saw my peace. God bless you all. More. Today the title is Wherever. Wherever. Sometimes that's where we've left our keys. Right? You're like me. Where were those things? I don't know what I've done with those things. Sometimes it's where you've left your cell phone. Uh, but hopefully, it's what we say to God with our life. Lord, wherever. Let's pray. Father, we bow before you today. I thank you so much, Lord, for this day. I thank you for this time together as a family. I ask, Father, that you would forgive me Forgive us of our failures, of our, of our disobedience, Father. May the words that are said today be your words. Make us, Lord, uncomfortable, unhappy with where we are so that we will walk towards you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Number 494 in your hymnal is wherever he leads, I'll go. Right. Wherever he leads, I'll go. In 1936, there were two friends that were serving together at a Sunday school conference. It was in the southern state of Alabama. You guys have heard of this place, right? Alabama. Anybody from Alabama? Nobody from Alabama. Close. We've got Tennessee. That's close. We'll, we'll accept it. All right, so they're serving at a Sunday school conference in Alabama. And one day they're sharing lunch. One was a missionary to Brazil. He was home on furlough. And so he was telling his friend uh, about some news he had just received. He was, again, a missionary in Brazil, home on furlough to raise support, to give reports to the churches that supported him. And he confides in his friend and says, I'll have to be leaving uh, Brazil because of my health. Sometimes missionaries, when they go and they serve, because of health issues, they have to come home uh, and spend the rest of their days wherever that is. And that's what's happening to this man in 1936. The doctors just told him, you need to be here. And so he had to leave the country that he had grown to love. He had to leave the people that he had grown to love. And he had just received this news home on this trip just a few days before. His heart was broken. His friend was a writer. And he asked him simply, what will you do? As R.S. Jones sat at lunch with his friend, through tears, he answered the question and he said, McKinney, wherever he leads, I'll go. And these words that our missionary R.S. Jones spoke to Mr. McKinney struck his heart. He was a writer, a songwriter. And because of this conversation at lunch, Mr. McKinney goes on to write number 494 in your hymnal, wherever he leads, I'll go. That's got to be a tough conversation to have. Something that you've been following the Lord. I mean, obviously... Uh, Mr. Jones had said years before, Lord, wherever you lead, I'll go. And the Lord told him, go to Brazil. And he said, okay, let's go. And he went to Brazil and he served there for many years. And his health required him to come back home. And his answer was still, wherever. Wherever you lead, I'll go. So when I think about this story and I think about others from Scripture, like in Deuteronomy 31, when Moses is talking to the children of Israel, and he's talking to Joshua. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, we're just going to read verse 6 really quickly. Moses says some things to Joshua in verse 6. He says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he, is, he it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Deuteronomy 31, 6. God is speaking to the children of Israel to Joshua through Moses. Moses is unable to go into the promised land because of choices he had made. You know, a lot of times when uh, things happen in life, they, they have consequences, don't they? They have consequences that we can't see uh, fully. And yet Moses, in a moment of anger and rage, comes out and kind of takes the spotlight from God. And because of that decision, Moses cannot enter the promised land. And so he says at the beginning of this chapter, I can't go, but you're going to go. But don't be afraid, because God's going to lead you as you go. He's with you. You know, the call of the patriarch Abraham in Genesis, his call was simply, go. I'll lead you. You just go. I can't imagine what he must have thought when God said simply, go. In Hebrews chapter 11, I, I would encourage you to read Hebrews chapter 11 later today or sometime this week, but in Hebrews chapter 11, it's the Hall of Faith. Yesterday, I guess, was the Hall of Fame induction ceremony for the National Football League. You know, you have all these players that spent years playing the, the, the game of football, and they were inducted into the Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. 
I've never been to any one of these these halls for baseball or hockey or soccer, or whatever. I've never been to any of them. But in chapter 11 of Hebrews, we have kind of this hall of faith for Christians. Well, Abraham is one of those that's mentioned in there. And in verse 8, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whither he went. He obeyed and went out. So God called Abraham and said, Abraham, I want you to go. And that's all the instruction you get. And so Abraham obeyed and he went. A lot of times in life, isn't that what you want? Especially as a parent, isn't that what you want from your children? You tell them, I need you to do this. What's the, some of the questions parents don't like to get? Why? 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 What for? Hey, but somebody else should have. Hey, pick up this toy. I didn't put it there. Right? You hear all these things. That's not obedience, is it? I learned one time a very valuable lesson when I was a kid. I remember watching TV uh, when I was a kid. I loved The Price is Right. I still do. I don't get to watch it very often, but I still do. One day, by the way, I was watching The Price is Right. One of the prizes was an all-expense trip. All-expenses-paid trip to the Buccaneer. <laughs> hey, I've heard of that place. So... I was watching The Price is Right, and my favorite game on The Price is Right was on. Plinko. Yes, you know, but you cheated. You're married to me. That's, that's not right. She knew the answer. Plinko. Plinko was on. I was a kid. We lived at 715 Jerome. It was a tiny house. And I'm watching Plinko. And from the kitchen, I hear my mom say, Gene, take the trash out. And I said what any kid watching Plinko would say. Mom, wait till commercial. I learned a valuable lesson that day. The lesson was debate, delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. You know, you just, just wait, hold on. But she wanted the trash taken out then. She needed it taken out right then, probably because she was trying to put something else in the trash, and the trash was full and needed to be done. And I was, wait just a minute. A lot of times we want to tell God to wait till we're comfortable, right? But that's not what Abraham did. God said, Abraham, go. And he said, all right, let's go. The Bible says he obeyed and he went. And you have Moses and you have Joshua. You have David. David is led by the Lord many times through his life. Okay, do this and do this. And David says, okay. Sometimes David, David didn't, right? Sometimes David went off on his own. But he was always quick to come back and remind everybody that what God wants is a broken and contrite heart. Not sacrifices, he says, because I, I could sacrifice. I'm the king. I have everything. I could sacrifice stuff. And he wants our heart broken. Wherever. Wherever he leads, I'll go. And we read these stories in Scripture. Paul, I need you to go here and do this. Paul goes. But I think sometimes in 2019, it's, it's difficult to translate that obedience that we see in Scripture into today. How do we live out wherever today? How, how do we read about Moses and his obedience? How do we read about Abraham and his obedience? How do we read these and translate it into today, right where you live, here in St. Croix? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's a good question. Uh, so, today, wherever he leads, I'll go. We're going to be reading in Romans. Romans chapter 8, side note, Wednesday night service has been all about Romans for several months. You've got one, maybe, maybe two more left. If you don't have something to do on Wednesday night, or I would even say if you have something that you already do on Wednesday night, you should make it a priority to be here. It's great. Uh, we study the Word together. Uh, and it's good. Wednesday night service is fantastic. It's a good thing to go to in the middle of the week. It gives you a boost in the arm. Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 12. We're going to read down through, 13, through 17. The Bible says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye, if ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs to God, and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So how do we, in 2019, have the mindset of obedience that says, God, wherever, God, whatever, I'll do it. Remember, Noah was called in a time when everyone in the world, it says, their thoughts and actions were evil continually. That's a bad time to live. Everybody, except for Noah and his family, everybody in the world, their thoughts and actions were evil continually. That is a bad time. And it says that God was sorry. He repented that he had made man. That's a bad time. And he was led by God. And God used him to build the ark, to save mankind. But how does that translate to today? How am I led today? There's no writing on the wall. We're not putting out a fleece at night, right? Gideon, we're not putting out a fleece at night and saying, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, make the fleece wet and everything around it dry. And the next night saying, oh, okay, well, just to make really sure, can you make the fleece dry and the ground wet? We're not laying out a fleece. How do we know, how are we led by God wherever today. I think when we talk about the leading of God, the leading of the Holy Spirit, we need to understand that one, His leading is never contrary to His Word. God's leading is never contrary to His Word. So, if we or anybody else we know says something, and this is, I think this is what God wants us to do, or this is what we need to do, and it's in opposition of the Word, we need to check the signal and make sure it's right. Do you ever get a phone call? And it's obvious right away that that phone call is not for you. You ever received one of those or a text message from somebody? And, okay, they've obviously sent this text message to the wrong person. I don't know who they were aiming for, but this isn't for me, right? This can't be. If we ever hear anybody say anything, or this is what we need to do, and it is in opposition of God's word, it's not from him. We're not being led by him. We can't say that, Okay, God's leading me to do this, and it's something strictly that His Word says no. Can't do that. It doesn't happen. His leading does not come that way. It is never in opposition to His Word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Not some, not part, not the parts that we like. There are parts of Scripture that we just don't like, Right? I'll just be honest. There are parts of Scripture that, I, you know, when I'm reading them, I, they make me uncomfortable. They, they, they really, you know, step on my toes. Those are the parts that kind of like, oh, man. It's called conviction. And it's given by inspiration of God to correct me, to instruct me, to guide me. And so how can we understand God to be guiding us today in 2019 through His Word? And it is never his will, his leading is never in opposition to his word. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. His word is given to us. Th think about this. You've received special letters, right? Some, some type of letter that's just really from someone special, or you've got a letter at some point in your life. I know today we're, we don't write letters anymore. It doesn't happen, right? I can't tell you the last handwritten letter I've received, but we don't. But you remember the days when you used to get letters, right? And you'd get that letter from someone, maybe even that someone special, and you, you enjoyed that. You, lo you looked forward to that communication, right? This is the creator of the universe. The one who spoke everything into existence. The one that we can call Father because of adoption. 
he's communicating to us. And sadly, so many times, we don't have time. And we wonder why we're not led. And we wonder why God's Spirit seems far from us. His leading does not come contrary to His Word. His Spirit guides us. His Spirit leads us. Number two, the Holy Spirit never leads us contrary to God's nature. God is immutable. That's a big word to mean He can never change. He cannot change. You cannot change God. He will not change. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And He's the same forever. God is God. He is perfect. He is holy. The Bible tells us in many different ways that He is absolutely pure. In Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with the Father and we live in darkness, we lie. He's perfect. His will is not contrary to His nature. So again, if there's any kind of idea or leading or understanding that maybe something is, if it sounds strange, a strange doctrine, walk away. Step back. Paul comes to the church many times through the New Testament and says, I'm so surprised that you've been taken away by this strange doctrine. Jesus dealt with strange doctrine all through his time. If we even have a question about a doctrine, go to his word. If anybody says, don't pay attention to that, listen to what I say. Okay, walk away. If we want to know how God leads us, it is through His Word. It is through the Spirit, His Holy Spirit, which, by the way, when we're saved, we receive. He guides us through our life. So, it's never in opposition to His Word, and it's never in opposition, opposition to His nature. 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are faithless, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. We change. We change. You ever have one of those days where one day you're, you're like everything's great and going perfect and everything and then later on in that day maybe not so much. Maybe we notice it in other people. You see them one minute and everything's terrible. The next minute everything's great. You know, you, you kind of go back and forth and you have these, but God is faithful. We're driven around by all kinds of different things, but God is faithful. His leading is not in, con in, in contrast to his nature. So what are the requirements for being led by the Spirit? If we want to be led as Moses, as David, as Noah, as... And you just put in the person from Scripture. If we want to be led by the Spirit, what are the requirements? There are requirements. Number one, you must be His. You must be saved. Sometimes you hear people talk today about, you know, everybody is God's child. We're all made in His image. That's clear from Scripture. He's created us in His image. But His children are those that have accepted Him. And he leads them. So if we want to be led by God, number one, we have to give Him our life. What does that mean? We give Him everything. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. There are many that in the last days are going to stand before God, the Bible tells us, and say, But Lord, what about this? And he says, Depart from me. I never knew you. Do we know God? Does he know us? How do we know if we know God? Jesus says, Those that know me know my voice and obey my commands. If we want to understand how to be led by the Spirit, how to be led by God, we need to know him. You guys know people's voices, right? Right now, my oldest, he's over here. He's, he's kind of lost his voice. He helped out at Vacation Bible School this week and didn't do a whole lot of um, sleeping. And so his voice has kind of gone a little bit. When he is talking, I don't recognize his voice because it's completely changed. It's altered. I told him the other day, I can't even, I, it's like I don't even know because he has said dad to me a couple of times and I've not paid, paid attention because I didn't know it was him. I didn't know his voice. I know my son's voice, but I didn't know his voice this week because it was completely changed. Do we know God's voice to when he says, my child, do we pay attention? Or do we just keep walking away? You ever have anybody call you and you don't recognize the voice? And somewhere way back here, you, you hear it, but you don't really, you don't understand it because you don't know the voice. 
right? You don't know the voice. And you, you hear it, but it doesn't register. We know Him if we know His voice. If we've given our life to Him, and all of our life, not try to hold something back. Remember, when people came to Jesus Himself and said, I want to follow you, Jesus didn't say, it's the easiest thing you'll ever do. Here's what happens. You just repeat after me, and then everything's good. Never have to worry about anything else. No, he gave people very strong warnings. I want to follow you. Understand what you're asking for, sir. Birds have nests. Foxes have holes. I don't even know where I'm going to sleep tonight. Another person, I want to follow you. Okay, you know, a king doesn't go into battle without first understanding what it's going to cost him. So do you know what this is going to cost you? What does following Christ cost us? Our life. He compares it to being crucified. If you're not willing to take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy to be my disciple. We give up our life. Now, the benefit package, you, you can't even mention it, right? It, it's, it's far beyond even our understanding. But first, we have, to, we have to give him our life and all of our life. It can't just be part of it. It can't just be Sunday from 10 to 12. It can't just be Sunday and Wednesday. It's all of it. All of our life is given to him. That's when we're led. That's when we can call ourselves children of God. Romans 8, 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. He leads us when we're His children. Will there be writing on the wall? No. No. There have been some pretty interesting situations through Scripture. I've often looked up at the clouds and thought, Lord, what are you talking to you through the clouds here? Like, what? Is there something I can see? That's not how he leads. He leads through his word. He leads through his people. He leads by his spirit. And he leads those that are his. John Blanchard said, A Christian may not always be conscious of the Holy Spirit's presence, but he would not even be a Christian in his absence. If we don't know when the Holy Spirit is leading us, guiding us, convicting us, we need to go back to square one. You ever do that in instructions for something? You're trying to put something together. You, you're like, okay, so what are we... Um, lock. You go back to a step or go back to the beginning and you start banging. Okay, let me make sure we've got this right. I've done it a thousand times with Legos, putting Legos together with my little boys. They want to do it, you know, and they get the Legos and they start putting it together. They're like, ah, oh, Dad, it doesn't work. I don't know what's wrong. Okay, you have to take it all apart and start back over at square one, right? With block number one and two and build from there. Sometimes we need to do that spiritually. Take a step back and say, okay, what's wrong? Because as we already know, God doesn't change. He's immutable. He is faithful. So if something seems wrong, it's here. 100% of the time. In a relationship with our fellow man, you know, there's a little bit of blame to be shared on both sides, right? You learn that through marriage. Right? I mean, it's not just one person's fault. It's both fault. Not with God. If there's something wrong, it's me. He is faithful. He has done everything.